Late last night at midnight Pacific Standard Time, update 1.07 went live for Modern Warfare. This is by far the biggest update we have seen so far for this game. It includes new maps, new game modes, and updates to almost every single weapon within Modern Warfare. It is a complete balancing patch. It also addresses claymores. It addresses battle chatter. This update is going to completely change modern warfare and in today's video we are going to go over everything that has changed because of this update we're going to look at the new maps we're going to look at the updates to weapons we are going to look at absolutely everything this video is to inform you exactly what is going on with today's update so without further ado let's hop in and look at everything that changed in update 1.07 so to start things out let's dive into the new maps so First off, we have Kravnik Farmland. This is the new Ground War map, once again, a 32v32 map. Now, the first thing you need to know about this map is there is a lot of open space. Basically, this map is a sniper's dream. You can go off to either side of the middle of the map and just look in with a sniper rifle and, generally speaking, do pretty damn well. Aside from the few farm bu buildings in the middle of the map, there's really no other cover. The other thing that I noticed from my brief time playing these maps is that Krobnik farmland tanks are so so damn good and in this update there was no change to tanks whatsoever which means tanks are absolutely godly on this map now that being said even though snipers are really good even though tanks are really good i do think that this map does have a place within the game this is the first time we see a ground war map that's basically completely wide open kind of reminiscent of a battlefield map so for all of you snipers out there or guys who like those long range weapons this map is going to absolutely be a dream for you. Now, the other thing I will say about this map is unlike the other two maps, it is very non-elevated. There isn't giant skyscrapers. There's not giant buildings that you can snipe off of. Generally speaking, the largest building in this map is a two-story building, and I think that's going to be pretty refreshing after playing the district map. But maybe it depends on the player so let me know what you think of the new map down in the comments and remember every map that we're talking about everything that's added today is 100 free so if you have the game anyone can play it after this we have shoot house and shoot house is by far the smallest map in the entire game out of all of modern warfare this is the smallest map and at first i absolutely hated it if i'm being honest with you guys but the more i play it the more it grew on me you do have to learn how to play this map there's a couple of power positions that are very strong in the second story building if you're up there you have a pretty big advantage and it's really the only place you can go like that also i found grenades and specifically stuns to be very powerful on this map because of how small it is so battle hardened and eod are pretty important perks on this map now as far as this map goes after i've played it a little while i love it it's by far the smallest map in the game and in my opinion the game actually needs a lot more maps like this it actually feels like you're playing a call of duty game and not a running simulator so all in all i'm pretty happy with the two maps that they've added in the other new thing is a game mode it is hard point this is a game mode that has been in call of duty for a while now really nothing has changed as far as this game mode goes but the one thing i will say is this is the first game mode i have played in modern warfare where i didn't really experience a ton of campers of course people were camping the hard point but at that point it's just playing the objective it was kind of actually refreshing to see that many people running around in a game so if it's constantly like this in hard point this might actually become a mode that i play more frequently so after the new con content that was added in this patch the next big thing that they addressed in the patch notes was bug fixes now i'm not going to go through every single bug fix as they are very little tiny details but if you want to read all of them they will be linked down in the description you can go check out the full patch notes all the bug fixes are there there is one that i did want to go into and it is this they said that sprint out and tack sprint which is basically your double sprint speeds are back to the same as they were in the beta now i didn't really notice a difference in the sprint speeds compared to the beta but i'm guessing that this is actually going to speed them up a little bit i don't think that they would reduce the sprint speeds so i'm guessing that we are going to be moving a little bit faster i'm also guessing that it's going to be to the point where it's almost not noticeable but i'm guessing we're going to be running around a little bit faster now moving into the bigger fixes these are the things that a lot of people have been talking about some things that you may have noticed in game first of all starting with the riot shield so what they said here is they fixed an issue where the throwing 
Knife and Thermite weren't causing the shield to go on the player's back when throwing. We've also fixed an issue where explosive splash damage wasn't working consistently. We'll continue to tune the Riot Shield in future updates. So this is good. This means those people who are running around with Riot Shields can no longer just throw throwing knives at you while they're completely protected and not expose themselves whatsoever. Basically, this is a nerf to Riot Shields. Moving on to Claymores. This is a big one. This is the one that a lot of people have been asking for. So what they said here is detonating an enemy Claymore with bullets is now non-lethal when at full health. So even if you're not using EOD, you shoot an enemy Claymore and you have full health, you will no longer die from it. That's a good start. They also said, we've also reduced the trigger and damage radius and also reduced the damage width to better match the trigger width. So in other words, those red little lasers, that's really gonna be the area where the Claymore is going to do damage to you. This is great, but I have to play the game a little more before I decide where claymores stand in my books. This definitely makes them better. You're definitely going to be able to survive them a lot more. And on top of that, as we're going to talk about in a little bit here, EOD got a buff as well. So you're really going to be able to counter these claymores a lot better. After this, we have Battle Chatter. This was a big one for me. Basically, what they did here is removed the ability for enemies to hear when your character yells out contact or enemy nearby or anything like that. So when Whenever your character calls out that there's an enemy nearby, the only people that can hear it is you and your team. The enemy team can no longer hear it, so it will not give away your position. Next, we have mounting, and all they said for this one is slightly increase the recoil while mounting. Basically, before this update, if you were to mount to a window or a ledge, your weapon would have pretty much zero recoil. They've now increased that amount of recoil to reduce the effectiveness of mounting. I think this is good. A lot of players will just literally sit in windows and mount and have no recoil on their weapon. This is going to make that a little less effective. After this, the only perk that got changed is EOD, and their description of this is EOD now clamps damage to non-lethal amount, assuming the player is at full health. In other words, if you are hit with an explosive while using EOD and you have full health, you will now not be killed. So beforehand, bouncing Bettys and C4s would kill you even if you were using EOD. Now, it should not. After this, they've updated the lighting so it's easier to see people in windows and dark corners. This is something they're going to continue to work on in the future. This is something that is relatively frustrated when someone kills you and you can't see them at all. So it's good that they are working on this. And then after this, we've got a big one. And that is, of course, footsteps. And I'm going to read this whole blurb and then talk about what it means. So they said... We've increased the occlusion percentage to filter footstep sounds behind geometry and adjusted the footstep volume at a distance. We have another large footstep change coming in the next update, which will make crouch and aim down sights movement significantly quieter. Stay tuned. So essentially what that means is footsteps are now going to be quieter at a larger distance and on top of that when someone is through a wall or underneath you footsteps will also be quieter you will now no longer be able to hear enemies coming a mile away and to me that's a good thing it'll make people more easily able to run around a little faster without enemies being able to hear exactly where they are coming from. Now, I need to play a little bit longer to see how good this is, whether they need to nerf it more, whether they need to buff it more, but I think this is a good step in the right direction. So after this, we are moving on to weapons. First of all, we have the 725 shotgun. This one got a pretty big nerf. First of all, an increase to aim down sights and hip spread. So you're going to have a bigger hip spread, more area for your pellets to go, and it's going to take you longer to aim down sights. And on top of that, reduced damage range. So I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. This gun is still overpowered as hell. This nerf was not enough. This gun still kills at a ridiculously long range, and it kills so frequently in one bullet that... Honestly, it's going to need to be nerfed again. It is still the best gun in the game. After this, we have the M4A1. So for this one, another big nerf. They reduced the damage range and a small recoil increase. So less damage over range and there is more recoil. 
This gun is still really good, might even be the best assault rifle still. I think the real area where this excels is with its headshot damage and up close damage. Now, essentially what this update changed is the attachments you have to use with it. Essentially, the way to look at it now is that you're going to need a couple of recoil stabilization attachments. After this, all assault rifles got nerfed, so they increased the hip spread to reduce effectiveness up close and less damage at long range for full auto fire. 556 five, rifles which is literally almost all of them so they aren't going to be as good at extreme long range and they're not going to be as good up close because they have more hip spread i still think the m4 is going to be really good up close the trick is you just have to aim down sights smgs on the other hand got a big nerf first of all increased move speed increased aim down sights move speed and a small reduction in sprint out time this is a huge 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 buff this makes all smgs better in any single circumstance and definitely makes smgs a lot more viable after this, the Uzi SMG got a buff as well. Increased damage range. And from what I can tell, it got increased at every single range. By no means is this a god gun. It has too slow of a fire rate, but it is much better than it previously was. After this, we move into some LMG nerfs, starting off with the MG34. First of all, increased hip spread, damage range reduction, and small aim down sights slow down. So in other words, you aim down sights slower and the range isn't as good on this weapon i do think that this is needed all of the lmgs in this game are actually pretty damn good i think they're still going to be good but the range isn't going to be as good like it was before similarly with the m91 once again we have increased hip spread and a small damage range reduction not as big as the mg's 34s but it is still going to reduce it a little bit and honestly i'm surprised that this one got nerfed less than the mg34 as i actually thought the m91 was better and then finally the pkm we have increased hip spread and medium damage range reduction so that middle range where you're getting like the three bullet kill that range is now reduced so you're more soon going to get a four bullet kill i don't think it's a big amount though and it's almost unnoticeable so all of the lmgs are still decent they are just not as good as they previously were next up is pistols and pistols got a massive buff first of all increased move speed reduced sprint out time and finally increased damage range so a pretty much all-around buff for pistols i still think pistols are still underpowered compared to primary weapons but they're also supposed to be they're secondary weapons so this is good i think they're better than they were before and at least now it is somewhat possible to go for camos for these things now the last thing that was changed kind of confuses me because i didn't expect this at all so if you are crouched or prone it will no longer adjust your recoil previous to this patch basically if you were crouched or prone your recoil would be reduced substantially now there is absolutely no difference i think that they are doing this to make it more viable to run around jump around and have the same amount of recoil doing so as if you were crouched or prone or not moving at all i think this is for the rushing players which is i think a good thing but again i'll have to get more play time with this to be able to tell for sure now the final of the big changes is to spec ops now spec ops got a pretty large update fixing a ton of different bugs once again if you want to read all of them link down in the description to the patch notes the one you should probably be made aware of is that they have increased the amount of xp earned while playing spec ops it's still not as much as playing multiplayer but it's substantially more than it was before before you were making like one fifth the amount of xp as you were in multiplayer now you're looking at about half so it's not as good but it's definitely viable if that's what you want to do to rank up now ladies and gentlemen that is the entire patch update 1.07 obviously the major updates include the weapon nerfs and buffs and of course the two new maps with the new game mode now i'm curious what you guys think of the update what is missing what did you like that they added let me know what you think down in the comments also if you enjoyed the video you found it informative i'd always appreciate it if you do hit that like button and of course if you're new to the channel like what you see here want to stay up to date on everything modern warfare make sure you hit that subscribe button Button. make sure you turn notifications on and as always guys i hope you enjoyed the video and until next time peace out we are we are reaching for the stars